Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at bid mass. So, some of you might use bod mass. I personally use bid mass, which stands for brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So, what is bid mass? Bid mass is the uh, sort of anagram, if you like, of the order in which you need to do a calculation. Okay, so we always do brackets first, then we do indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So whenever you've got um, a big sort of sum of different things that are going on, you need to remember bid mass, because if you do it uh, just move from reading left to right, you will get the answer wrong, which is very, very common in exams. So let's have a go at some examples to illustrate the point. One thing I will just mention, indices, if you're unsure what that means, that's like your powers, so 2 squared or 3 to the power of 4 or 5 to the power of 7, it's these powers here. But also square roots, so for example the square root of 25, if you see a square root or cube root, that comes under indices. Um, okay, let's get cracking then. So in this first example, I've got a multiplication and a subtraction, so multiplication comes first. So I do 6 times 5, which is 30. And then I just bring the rest of it down. And then I can do my subtraction. 30 take away 10 is 20. Nice and simple. Next one, I have an addition and a multiplication. So again, multiplication comes first. So I need to do that first. So 3 times 4 is 12. And then I bring the rest of it down. And then just finish it off with an addition to get 14. Next one, I've got a subtraction and multiplication again. So multiplication comes before subtraction. So I need to do 2 times 4, which is 8. Then I bring the 15 and the subtraction down like so. And then 15 take away 8 is 7. A little bit more interesting. This time I have some brackets. So I need to do the brackets first. So 20 take away 7 gives me 13. And then I can still bring the squared there. Then it's just 13 squared, which is 169. Next one, I've got a multiplication and I've got some indices. So indices comes before multiplication, so I need to do that first. So 5 squared, meaning 5 times 5 is 25. And I can bring the rest of it down. And I can finish it off with my multiplication. 3 times 25 is 75. Okay, a few more things going on this one. I've got a multiplication, I've got an indice, and I've got a subtraction. So the first thing on my list is indices, so I need to do that first. 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. Then I can bring the rest of it down. Then I'm left with multiplication and subtraction. So multiplication is before subtraction, so I need to do that first. So 2 times 16 gives me 32, and then I can bring the minus 10 down, and finish it off to get 22. Few things going on here, but you notice I've got two multiplications and an addition. So multiplication is before addition, so I need to do both multiplications. So 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 4 is 12, and I can bring my addition down and then finish it off with the addition to get 22. Now, this next one's an interesting one because we've got an addition, we've got a multiplication, and we have a division. Now, in theory, we would do the division first, but I can't actually do the division because I don't know what number is actually on the top here. So in this situation, we have to work out what's on top, and then we can divide it by 2. So I'm going to ignore the divide by 2 now, and I've got a plus and a multiplication. Multiplication comes first, so I will do that. 3 times 2 is 6, then I've got my... 4 on the plus, and obviously I'm still divided by 2. But I can't divide by 2 still because I don't know what is meant to be on top. So I need to add these to get 10 divided by 2. Now it's easy. I can just do 10 divided by 2 to get 5. Okay, so even though division was the first thing I was meant to do, if you can't actually do it, you need to then uh, solve what's on top, just like I did there. This one's a little bit different because I have a division, I have a subtraction, and I have a multiplication, which means I should do the division first. And in this particular example, I can. I can do 6 divided by 3, not a problem. So 2 minus 2 times 5, like so. Okay, so if you can do it, make sure you do it first. 
then I'm left with a subtraction and a multiplication. So multiplication is before subtraction. So I'll just do that. And I'm left with 2, take away 10, which is minus 8. OK, this one here, very similar to this one over here. But I've got to do, this time it's in brackets, which means I definitely have to do the brackets first. So inside the brackets, I have 3 times 4, which is 12. And in this bracket here, I have 2 times 6, which is 12. And I can do the subtraction. 12 minus 12 is 0. OK, so there's a few examples there. And I've just got a couple more to show you on my other sheet. OK, so this one here, again, I've got brackets and I have an addition. So I must do the brackets first. So I must do 4 plus the 5 to get 9. And then it's just an expanding of bracket. Now, hopefully, if you have expanded brackets before, you know that that actually just means 3 times 9, which, of course, is 27. So when we're expanding brackets, we are multiplying. This one here, I've got a subtraction and division. So division comes first, and I can do the division. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and I bring the 17 minus it down, and then finish it off with the answer of 15. And this one here, I have indices, and I have uh, an addition. So indices comes first. It's the second thing on the old bid mass. So I must do that. And then 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And I can bring my plus down or my addition down and finish it off 16 plus 8 24 and the last uh, one I'm going to do um, to illustrate uh, bid mass with the examples is this one here so you might remember me saying at the start a square root is an indice I've got an indice there I've got two additions and I've got some brackets brackets comes first so I have to work out what's inside the brackets first and inside the brackets I have an indice and an addition. So the indice comes first. So I'll have the square root, but I want to leave that the same. The indice 2 squared is 4 plus 3. Okay, still need to work out what's in the brackets. Uh, in this case, that's going to be 7. And of course, just leave that as it is. Now I've got an addition and an indice on the outside, so I need to do that now. Square root of 81 is 9. You could have done that up here to be fair, but it's nice to work in order. Plus 7 and then finish it off with 16. Okay, I've picked these three here just as something that it could be asked in an exam where they give you uh, some numbers and some operations and they tell you what it's equal to. And the question or your challenge is to figure out where brackets need to go to make this correct. So there's different ways you can tackle this. There's a little bit of trial and error involved. Um, I would always try the first um, brackets here, and then if that doesn't work, try the middle, and then obviously try the end, and just try different combinations. And obviously if the number's too high or too low, you can sort of try and uh, sort of cancel it down. But when you're doing this, you must remember the bid mass. So your brackets will be first, and obviously multiplication, and then your addition and subtraction. So bid mass definitely does come into play with questions like this. So let's give it a go. Let's start off with brackets at the front to see if that works. So do the brackets first. 6 take away 4 would give me 2. Then times 4 plus 5, and it needs to equal 13. In this case, I've got a multiplication and an addition, so 2 times 4 gives me 8, plus 5, and it equals 13. Brilliant. So that one's actually correct, so I just stick the brackets in there. Um, so let's try uh, uh, this one here then. So you could obviously try something else and put the brackets here, and then you'd have uh, 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 5, 20, so it's, it's not big enough. So if I put the brackets around here, I'll have 6. Uh, times 3 and it didn't quite get there so I need something a bit bigger so maybe try this where I do 5 plus 3 which is 8 then times that by 4 let's just do, write that down 8 times 4 plus 2 needs to equal 34 8 times 4 32 
plus 2 and again is 34. So that one works. Again, the brackets need to go there. So it's a little bit of trial and error if you like. If I went there, I got 6 times 3. It wasn't quite big enough. So I tried something a bit bigger to get the 8 times 4, which is obviously a bit bigger. So there's a little bit of trial and error involved. And this one, or the next one here. So I've got 3, minus 2, minus 3, minus 6. And the answer needs to be minus 2. So, how do we go about this? This one, again, is a little bit of trial and error. So you could try the front, you could try the back, you could try the middle. It might be that there's two sets of brackets, the front and the middle. It's just a little bit of trial and error. But what I will say is, is that if this is a one-mark question or a two-mark question, don't spend too long on it. If, you've got, if it's one mark, spend one minute. If it's two marks, spend two minutes. You can always come back to it later, but what you don't want to do is spend 10 minutes on this just for one mark or two marks and lose marks elsewhere on the paper because you run out of time, okay? So let's have a look at this then. If I put it around the front, like here, I'll have three, take away two, which is one, minus three, minus six, which is minus two. So that'd be minus two, minus six. Nope, that doesn't work. That one doesn't work. Uh, so let's try the middle. Like so, in which case, do the brackets first. So I'll have 2 minus 3, which gives me minus 1. And then I'll have my 3 and my minus, and then minus 6. And that needs to equal minus 2. Now, don't forget this one as well. 3, take away minus 1. If you take away a negative, take away a negative turns into a positive. So that'll be 4 minus 6, which is minus 2. And actually, that one does work. So in this case, the brackets are here. Now, when doing something like this, it's always handy to have a pencil because if you do make a mistake in your working, you can just rub it out, unlike me who just crossed it out, but you can rub it out with a pencil and then you can make your answer really clear. Do not, in any circumstances in the exam, if you did a mistake like that and then you put the correct answer down, do not leave these here. Make it really clear that they are nothing to do with your answer because if you have those brackets and these brackets, the examiners class it as choice, in which case you can lose marks. So make sure it's really clear what your final answer is. So that's just something that could come up in exams. Hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.